Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and this is going to be for episode 2 of my little finance money series. And this episode is going to be about how do you know when your balls deep in with, uh, with, uh, with shit dealing with money. Sorry to say it like that, but... I mentioned in the previous episode that the first step to getting your shit together is recognizing that fundamental equation and the definition of what money is. So understanding that money is a tool, of course, I said in the last episode, was step one, but I'm going to take it a step further with episode two. So the biggest thing that needs to be understood once you recognize what money is is that you have to identify how deep you are in shit when it comes down to money i know a lot of people don't like to talk about money they think it's cliche they think it's taboo they don't want to talk about money they don't want to talk about their spending habits they don't want to talk about budgeting they don't want to talk about looking at any of that shit and i totally understand that it's a culture that we've pretty much just been raised in. But I will say something. Reality is not going to change just because you were raised a certain way. Money is not going to stop existing just because you stop talking about it. And if you're spending too much on your credit card, your credit card bills are not going to fucking disappear by you not talking to Deborah about how you're overspending. All right, the far the, the longer you look away from your spending habits and reckless spending, the more deep up the, the more you'll find yourself up shit creek, knees deep without a paddle. The sooner you recognize that you're walking up shit creek, the sooner you can grab your boat and turn the fuck around and get the hell out of there. With that in mind, know that this might be an uncomfortable topic, and it's probably going to be an uncomfortable episode. So, buckle up, that's all I can say. You know when you're balls deep into money issues, when your job is absolutely trash, your boss reminds you every day that you're expendable and he could fire you at any minute and replace you with somebody who'd just be begging you for your position. And here's how you know when you're really deep in it, right? You're deep in it when you realize, oh shit, he's right. I'm not saying that, you know, people don't have mortgages and car notes and light bills and stuff and children and pets to take care of. I'm just saying if you are so trapped that you couldn't walk away from blatant disrespect, and I'm not talking about hold your tongue kind of disrespect, I'm talking about if you're experiencing sexual harassment at your job and there's not a goddamn thing you can do about it you've tried everything you can do and the only reason why you're staying is because you have a job that'll pay your bills and your boss knows this and is taking advantage of it to get away with the shit that he's doing that's how you know when your balls deep in now my dad talks about how back in the day it used to be you could quit a job and pick up another job like damn near within the same week like high turnover like you could just say fuck you to this guy and then get another job like three days later it's not like that anymore the reality is getting a job keeping a job maintaining a job is difficult so i'm not going to pretend like the solution is tell everybody who's ever did you wrong at your job fuck you and just quit because that would just be dumb but referring to the previous episode, understanding what money is, if you're in situations like that, you can try to save your money, invest your money, uh, put away your money in a way so that way you have a nest egg. So if you need to leave this job and it's going to take you three months to get another job, you can tell Samson to go fuck himself. Okay, maybe don't do it like that, but like you could do that and have some savings to sit on in the meanwhile while you're trying to find another job. Hell, the thing about a lot of the problems that we're having right now is a part of fixing those problems is that you have to acknowledge that they're even there. 
And then you gotta be practical in your approach on how you're going to solve them. It's easier said than done, but like I said, step two, when it comes down to the money issues, is you gotta look the red devil in, in its eye. Like you, that Starbucks you get every day, that six, seven dollars you spend on it every day, that shit adds up over time. Like I'm not the best mathematician in the world. I don't even fucking like math, but I can whip out my smartphone and I can pull out the calculator app and price that shit up and realize that if you do that five days a week, $7 a pop, that's $35 a week. And then 35 times four, that's, that's $140 a month, y'all. That $140 could have gone somewhere else. Now, I mean, it's your time, your money, but little stuff can snowball into bigger stuff. And the reason why I'm pointing that out is because bad money habits is kind of like a slippery slope. If you're already dropping $140 a month on Starbucks, What's to stop you from impulse buying anything else? And then later down the line, it turns out that $140 you spent that month could have been useful for a surprise expense later on down the line. So you have to go and actually look at your money habits. And here's a fun little tip. You don't have to go through and comb over every one of your like bank statements or records unless you were just going fucking nuts on Amazon. If so, please, please look at your bank account. But you need to know where your money is going. When you get it in, you need to know where it's going. Because if you're hemorrhaging, you know, you, you see a dude get like his arm chopped off, right? Assuming they can save his arm. The first thing they do they're, the first thing they're going to do, they're not going to sit here and look for the arm. They're going to stop the goddamn hemorrhaging. Like, they're going to tourniquet that shit and get his ass to the nearest hospital so they can stop the bleeding. And if they happen to get the arm on the way there, kudos. Because then they can work on trying to repair it and trying to get him in better shape. Your finances are kind of like that. If you're hemorrhaging money left and right, and you don't even know where the fuck it's going, it's going to be a lot harder to get your finances in order. So here's what you should do. Now, I didn't necessarily track every single cent, penny, dollar, dime, quarter. I didn't, I didn't sit there and track every single cent I had. But here's what I did. I bought a... $12 a $12 whiteboard from Walmart and you know what I also did I bought like a $5 pack of expo markers because writing shit down helps it really settle in your mind so here's what we're gonna do I'm sure you heard my marker there first thing you're gonna do is list your bills well yeah well no no don't list your bills List out how much you make. You're gonna list out how you how much you make because you need to see that number. You need to understand that number. Because if you're spending like you're making $24 an hour, but bitch you make $10 an hour, you gonna need to slow the fuck down and you're gonna need to like visually accept it. How much do you make an hour? And if you have a salary, Okay, I guess how much you make a month. I'm an hourly employee, so we're going to go with hourly here. With the salary, you could break it down to how much you make a month as well. Just as easy. Get your handy dandy calculator. You know, you just pull up your app on your phone. Or if, if you're, if you got a regular calculator, you can pull that out too. This is just basic arithmetic. Put down how much you make an hour. And then... Put down how many hours you make a week and how much you make every two weeks. Take how much you make every two weeks, multiply that 
by two and that's how much you make a month so understanding what the hell you make is very important in this process once you see that number the next thing I want you to do is list out all your expenses like all the expenses that you have no choice but to pay so like rent is not optional here you list out your rent your electric bill your light bill if it's the same thing your AC bill I, I don't your water bill the internet bill your cell phone bill your car note insurance the list goes on student loans my god just list out all the bills that you pay regularly and list out how much those are too once you know what your bills are and how much money you make an hour take the amount that you make a month so that's like two paychecks right because if you, if you get paid every other week if you get paid once every week you, you know it's, it's four right just times four right so you're going to take that number and you're going to subtract your bills from your bank account or not your bank account but like how much you make every two weeks and that number is going to represent how much money you have left over at the end of the month so that number is going is not including non-essential things it's not including when you're going to get your nails did or your hair done or when you when you buy something you know like an impulse buy on Amazon that is how much money you make after you've already like paid your bills if you are an hourly associate and you don't uh, you, you're not full-time so your hours go up and down go through look at the go actually go into your bank account look at the last six months and average out so just take like each paycheck you've made if like the two paychecks that you made each month like six months prior take those numbers add them up divide it by if you get paid divide it by like 12 because it's two paychecks per month six times two 12 divided by 12 so you have an over a, overarching average of how much you roughly make a month and the number that you'll get is going to be roughly the same it's going to be an estimate of how much money you will have kind of left over at the end of the month or at the end of paying your major expenses once you see what that number is really absorb it and then the next thing you should do is actually go into your bank statements and look at what you spend that money on every month. Just take one month, pick a month, random month. Look at all the junk and shit that you buy that has no real purpose. None. And you'll find out how bad you're hemorrhaging. If you're breaking even at the end of every month, that's better than going negative and being in debt. Now, I know I didn't include what happens if you have, like, major big loans. Because some financial people will go into, like, your net worth and whatnot. And we'll go through that here. But I just want you to absorb the number. How much money you have left over after you pay your essentials. Because from that point, whatever money you have left, if you're not actually putting that away in savings or putting at least some of that away in savings you need to see where it's going and you need to see what useless shit you tend to buy so you can get a reality check with that i'm sorry this episode is a little bit longer than the other one but hopefully it pays off and i'll see you guys next time peace out